potentially the internet's most popular mafia series reading the cutest little kind of quite spicy rom-coms and then rereading one of my favorite series potentially of all time hello everyone my name is emily and today we're going to talk about the 12 books i've read in august august was a stellar month in terms of reading read so many good books naturally that makes sense because it is my birthday month so it's already going to be a great month as is you know but we're gonna go through all the books i read we're gonna chat about my thoughts we're gonna keep it spoiler free and before we get into all of it make sure to follow me on goodreads and storygraph at m's novellas let's get into it you guys okay so if you came if you know at all where i was at the end of july you know that i was in my jessica joyce era i've discovered the x files which is I literally don't even have words. Read You with a View for my National Park and Photography lovers. Highly recommend. First book I read in August was her short story, A Risk Worth Taking by Jessica Joyce. This is a story that kind of follows two individuals who have uh, what's supposed to be a one night stand and weather kind of causes some issues and it becomes more of an extended stay. It's a very classic, simple story of realizing maybe there's a little bit more. Will I hold out for this person? One of them is moving. Will they move? Will they wait? You'll have to read it to find out. Okay, so going into one of the most mafia, or one of the most, I was gonna say mafia anticipated. I don't know what the mafia is anticipating or what they're, they're thinking about right now. One of my most anticipated mafia reads, I don't read a lot of mafia books. I will note most of my mafias, why is that word so hard to say? Most of my mafia, 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 mo it's not sounding, okay. What's going on? Anyway, most of the mafia books I've read I've been on Wattpad. Mm. Nice little stories. So this was fun to read a, like a full series, whole published series. I read the Dark Verse series or What's Out of It by Runix. I don't know how to say their name. Runix, R-U-N-Y-X. And this was not at all what I anticipated. The books kind of follow different couples and it's really fun because as the stories progress more and more puzzle pieces and little hints and clues about like things that were happening in like book one and two come up in, come up in books five and we're coming on to six so like four and five a little bit more first book starts off we're going to keep this all spoiler free and i don't want to spoil the couples because that will give away some things but is this a spoiler the first two books follows the same couple and then the other three books follow different couples. I don't think that's a spoiler, but it was very fun because all the characters are so different and you kind of find different things to like about them. There's characters for all different types of people, like personality wise and whatnot. And it's really interesting because it's essentially all of this stemming from what was this big like mafia war between two families and they became they came to an alliance and something broke that alliance so they're kind of uncovering all these like underground definitely illegal activities going on there's characters that have like there are some characters that are missing like family members there's like a lot of drama it's kind of i wouldn't say too gory definitely spicy for sure but I would definitely make sure to read trigger warnings before reading these books. I will note I looked, I like books one through four a lot more. Let me keep my lips as tight as possible. The fifth one, I just didn't care for one of the main characters at all. So I didn't really like that one as much. But I'm excited. The sixth book of the series, I think the final book comes out in October. So everything's going to be wrapped up. So if you want to avoid spoilers potentially and catch up and get with the hype, I would recommend reading these. The next book, because that was like five books right there. Next book I read was Not Another Love Song by Julie Soto. 
She has also written Forget Me Not. This is the, uh, it was picking up a lot of speed where it was about the two exes who one is a wedding planner, another is a florist. They previously had a romantic history, broke up, and now they have to work together on a new wedding. Lots of drama, lots of angst. I like second chance romances when they're done well. And that one was good, but we're not talking about that book as much. We're talking about Not A Little Love Song. This is for my musical nerds. This is about, how do I explain this? It's, it starts off really interesting to me where I'm kind of like, what? But to give you the premise, it's these two individuals who both play string instruments and I don't even remember like, there's just so much to unpack with it where essentially it starts off a little bit as like rivals, but not really, but like weirdly so because the main female character, she is kind of, kind of loosely a prodigy with I think viola she plays. I feel like it's viola. I don't, I'm quite confident it's not violin. And now I'm over here like second guessing that, but I'm sorry if I insulted anyone. She is in this like symphony group and has an opportunity potentially to really like build upon her career because music is what she wants to pursue. But there's this guy who the, he's like, a very famous musician. He's part of a band. He's also in this symphony and they don't start off to a good, they don't have a good start first meeting. He's kind of like gives off like pretentious vibes. Like I'm better than everyone. And they like interact more and more cause something comes up that like she piques his interest then. And it's just such a like horny book. That was literally my thought process while reading this. I was like, I was like geeking out over the musical sides and everything. And there was like a lot of drama that I was like, why there's, I don't know if there's a need for this much drama, but it, it was just horny. We're gonna say horny and nerdy. So if you're into that, highly recommend. The next book I read in August was my book club book for the paperback book club. And it was The Duke and I. We wanted to read, or the person who chose the book, she wanted to read the first book of the Bridgerton series. I've never seen the show, and I, but I know the couples, that's the extent to like the spoilers. So it was kind of exciting to read the book. I don't know if I'm a historical fiction, ro historical romance fiction girly. Maybe it's because I just like am such a raging, aggressive feminist <laughs> that I hate how women were, I, we're not treated great now, but like, especially like back in the day, it was like, oh, we, your job is to marry, your job is to have kids. And a lot, maybe I'm just not reading the right books, but this kind of had similar energy to that. And I, uh, I just don't care for that. I will note the other three people in our book club all have seen the show. And they said that the show is better than the movie, or the show is better than the book, which I feel like that's pretty rare when that happens. So that made me feel good because I gave this book two stars. <laughs> Moving on. All right. I reread one of my favorite series. Can you guess what it is? It is on my top bookshelf. It is the Darkest Mind series. Woo! Okay. These little guys right over here. I read this series every single year. I love it so much. It's a young adult. It's about these people or these kids really who there's kind of this nationwide disease and kids in a certain age range develop powers. It's so cool because there's like a power spectrum that is associated with how strong 
your powers are, but the stronger your powers are, the more unstable, like physically and mentally you are, which is so fun to think about. <laughs> it's a classic, like there's government conspiracies about what's going on. There's like clearly like support groups for the kids or support groups, like there's groups against the kids that should get, they claim they should be, get rid of them. And then this follows our female main character who has one of the more powerful power tiers and kind of her journey of from like the age 10 to I think it was like 17 that she's dealing with all of this. And there's just the plot is phenomenal through all three books. There's huge plot twists that literally like I forget every time I read it every year. And I love this series so much that I feel like I always remember all of it, but then something always gets me every time. The character development, the characters are so diverse. They're so lovable. And it really kind of makes you think about like, what is the best decision? And what is kind of like looking out for people's well-being and maybe a little bit more of a selfish decision. So good, I love this series so much oh my gosh i literally i probably should have waited a little bit longer because this kind of gives off fall vibes but i just couldn't wait i felt myself going into a reading slump and i was like we gotta read something good after the duke and i and i was like we gotta we gotta uplift the spirit so we read that and then the last book i read in august was expiration days by rebecca surley this was recommended to me and it's about essentially this girl who receives pieces of paper telling her how long she'll be romantically involved with various partners. Which like, I have a couple thoughts on. My first initial thought was like, does she try to defy the papers at any point? That was literally my first thought. Like literally just reading the the plot summary, you don't even have to read any of the book to think about that. So that was one of my first thoughts. It's very interesting because it's kind of going through all the different relationships, explaining her thought process behind it. Some other things come out that kind of explain why her mindset is the way it is. I will know I didn't really care for this book. I kind of found the female main character a little bit frustrating and I was not a fan it was a fun read I think this is a really fun concept I just don't love I didn't like the main character and I found her a little annoying oh huh, but that's okay so those are all the books I've read in August so far right now I'm on I'm reading Just Last Night, written by Vari McFarlane. I literally, it's taking me a week and a half to read this book because we were off to a great start and then there was a plot twist and I'm like, I'm not emotionally stable enough to read this. So here we are. And also I'm still reading The Book Thief. And I know my sister hates to hear that because it's been taking me like three months to read and I just blame AP Lang and AP Lit because I feel like I can't enjoy this book without analyzing every single sentence. I just would like to enjoy it like all my other books which that's something I need to unlearn but it's fine. So that's everything I've read in August. It was a wild time and a lot of good books were read. Let me know what you guys are reading any book recommends you have for me, any really great books you've just read in general and you want to talk about, comment below. I'd love to hear it. There are some very highly anticipated books coming out in August, September, and October. So buckle up, make sure you subscribe because some book reviews are coming your way and we're going to keep chugging along. I appreciate you guys so much for listening and hanging out. Be sure to like this video if you're able to. And I'm going to go maybe try to read just last night we'll see if i'm more mentally stable now <laughs> all right
bye guys see you next week or if you have wattpad mafia recommendations comment them below that would be a throwback oh my gosh should i reread some of those let me know it's been a hot minute since i've been over there but there could be new things up i don't know we'll just have to see